Hello everyone. So today we will be doing a very important topic under air pollution that is Gaussian plume model. Uh, in Gaussian plume model, we'll uh, know what is Gaussian plume model. Uh, we will talk about certain assumptions while we uh, consider into the calculation under this model. Then some important points that we need to take care while calculating our air pollutant concentration. Then advantages and disadvantages and we shall also be practicing a numerical at the end. So let us begin. Now Gaussian flu model basically uh, is a very simple uh, mathematical model which is used to uh, calculate the concentration of pollutant from a point source emission. Also, when I say model, model uh, means something which is uh, mathematical. That means we are talking about lots of calculations. So here we will be using calculation to measure the air pollution concentration. Also, this is the most common air uh, pollution model that we use. It is most common air pollution model that we use for calculating the pollutant concentration, uh, especially at ground level. So uh, one thing that we need to take care of is that it is uh, it is applied to point sources emission like coming uh, from smoke from a chimney stack or coal burning. And also we uh, here under this model, we talk about 3D uh, dimensional concentration. 3D dimensional concentration means that uh, we have three axes. So uh, suppose if this is our this is our x-axis, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis and this is our z-axis. So across all the three axes we are talking about the concentration of the air pollutant. Now this Gaussian dispersion model it can be uh, applied to a single point source, like we just said, smokestack and all, but it can also be modified a bit for line sources like emission coming from motor vehicles along a highway or area sources like large number of point sources. But particularly in this uh, video, we will be talking about the Gaussian plume model for point source. Now, uh, before we understand what exactly this model is and how do we measure the concentration of the pollutant, we need to uh, take into account certain assumptions for this model. So first assumption is that the rate of emissions from the source is constant. So we are assuming that the rate with which the pollutant is coming out from a chimney. So suppose if uh, this is a chimney, so rate is at what rate per second at per like how many, for example, what micro, uh, how many, uh, how much amount of microgram or how much amount of pollutant is coming out per second. That is usually the rate of emission. So the we consider or we assume the rate of emission to be constant, like it is not more like, uh, you know, in initially it is more then it is less. We do not consider that. We consider that the rate of emission from the source is constant. Second uh, assumption is the wind speed is constant both in time and with elevation. Elevation means height. So we are assuming that the speed of the wind is not changing uh, neither with respect to time nor with respect to height. So this is one assumption we are considering. Uh, you know, it is a uh, because spin weed, uh, sp uh, wind speed is directly proportional uh, to the concentration. If there is more wind, it will carry away the pollutant. If there is less wind, so there is a direct uh, impact on the concentration. So here we are assuming, see, this model is basically uh, followed under stable meteorological conditions. So when I'm saying stable meteorological conditions, that means I'm not talking about wind speed. I'm not talking about variation uh, with respect to time. We are not talking about variation with respect to height. Third assumption is the pollutant is conservative. Conservative basically here means non-reactive. We are not talking about any reactive pollutant here. We are applying this Gaussian plume uh, model only for non-reactive pollutants. That is these pollutants, they are not destroyed. They do not change their chemical composition. They are not undergoing any chemical reaction or lost by decay or deposition. Even when they hit the ground, none is absorbed and all is 
reflected right so it has to be non reactive for reactive pollutants like your photochemical smog and vocs and all we cannot follow gaussian plume model so gaussian plume model is only effective for non reactive or conservative pollutants fourth assumption is that the terrain is relatively flat open country basically you know uh, that means there should be no obstacle there should be nothing so for example if you know there is a chimney and smoke is coming out of it and if i consider here you know if mountains are present here so these mountains will act as a obstacle to this so we assume that under gaussian plume model we consider that we are having a we are having a open ground and no such obstacles are present so that terrain is relatively flat and open so these these four these four are the most important uh, assumptions which we have to follow while calculating the concentration of any pollutant under uh, or using gaussian plume model now let us understand how this model works so here in this uh, diagram you can see that we have a we here we are talking about a chimney stack so uh, smoke from chimney so here we have our chimney or you can say this is our chimney stack so this small edge small edge is the height of the stack this one so this is the height of the stack and this delta edge here you can see this delta small edge is the height of the plume can you see here this is the plume so height of the plume this is basically height of plume plume is nothing but the smoke coming out plume is the smoke coming out so it is also having some uh, height now like for example if i consider if i consider this is this to be our chimney so some some uh, height the smoke will also cover the smoke will not just come like this it will come with certain pressure so when it will come the when the smoke is coming with little pressure so it will have certain height so this height is the plume height okay so delta h is the height of the plume okay and this is the main stack height and together this delta h together this delta h and small h is our effective height so capital h here stands for the effective height so basically h is equal to delta h plus h this is effective height delta h is the plume height and h is the height of the stack then we have wind speed wind speed is represented by u or we can also write it as uh so this is the speed of the wind which we are considering to be constant uh in this particular like it will vary in your question if question comes on uh, calculating concentration so they will give you different wind speed but yes it won't vary in a particular situation here this dotted line at this dotted line we calculate the concentration so at this particular point the concentration is maximum so at this height basically at this particular height this is also known as instantaneous plume boundary so at